Hello, and welcome back to Toy Thursday with Johnny Tiger. The date is February 16, 2023. Uh, what is this that we're looking at? This is a fat cyclops. This is the fat cyclops from the old Hercules cartoon. At least that's what I what, uh, I understand him to be. I don't remember much about the Hercules uh, animated series, but I I think this Cyclops did appear in it. Uh, a little bit of a funny, uh, horrifying, funny personal story. Uh, some of my friends had made jokes that this guy uh, can double, uh, can act as my stunt in the Johnny Tiger documentary. Yes, there is a Johnny Tiger documentary. Uh, that is going to be about 90 minutes long, and it's going to be coming up sometime this year. So keep tuned for that. So, but uh, yes, we have used quite a few of my action figures uh, to set up these several scenes in the documentary, and uh, a lot of uh, times we needed someone to sort of uh, symbolize me in the uh, documentary. So, uh, my film crew has joked that we should use this guy. Yeah, I know. They're not very nice. So, why am I... Uh, no, I work, I do work with some really nice people. Uh, uh, they just have a horrible, horrible sense of humor sometimes. Um, but anyway, anyway, why do we... Why are we showing a fat cyclone today? Well, uh... Mainly because today it is uh, Fat Thursday. What is Fat Thursday, you may say? Well, Fat Thursday is a uh, special day that you should indulge yourself in eating sweets, most in particular donuts. This day is always calculated 52 days prior to Easter. So every year, Fat Thursday is 52 days prior to Easter. The uh, Celebration has gone back as long as 16th century, as far back as 16th century, and it is a Polish uh, celebration. So on this day, you are supposed to hit up some Polish or European bakery, get some nice treats, get a box of donuts for your co-workers, and don't forget, you should enjoy a box of donuts yourself, because this is a day when you can Splurge and be proud to be fat. But the reason that we are also uh, getting this out of the way uh, is I don't want to do an episode on Fat Thursday. Uh, rather, I'm going to deviate a little bit from our usual uh, special figure of the day format. And I'm going to take you a little bit deeper into the world of action figure collecting. In particular, I'm going to take you deeper into my experience. I'm going to give you uh, a little glimpse of what is it like uh, for me to buy an action figure. Now, some people may be saying, well, what's complicated about that? There's a figure you want, you go and you buy it. But have you ever asked yourself that? Uh, is it really that simple? Or, let's, let me hit you with this question, because this one uh, is what people ask me all the time. If you are blind and you can't see, how do you know what figure you want to buy? Aha, uh -huh. yeah, suddenly this is a little bit more interesting, isn't it? So for the next three episodes, I'm going to take you uh, into my psyche and uh, show you a little bit of uh, what I go through uh, during my collecting journey. I'm going to do this by showing you, uh, talking about figures that I don't want to get, but have to get, or got for various reasons, uh, figures I want to get, but end up regretting, or figures I really, really, really wanted for one reason or another. This will take uh, including this episode, three episodes, because I don't want to have one super, super massive long episode 
uh, that is hard to digest and hard to post and uh, difficult for you, difficult for me. So today, we're going to use today's episode in looking at uh, figures that I didn't want to get in the first place, but got anyway. Let me quickly say this, that uh, for everybody, every collector's uh, thought process and journey may be a little bit different. Uh, yes, there are collectors that uh, they get 10 action figures, uh, like they, maybe they really like uh, Terminator and Alien, so they get all the Terminator characters from the first movie, all the character from the first Alien movie, and they're happy. After that, they quit. They don't, they don't get any more figures. They just have that, those 10, 12 action figures in their room, and they're fun. I kind of envy those people sometimes because their life must be so much easier uh, than the rest of uh, us that have to struggle with um, deciding what to get, what to not get, what to cancel, what to pre-order, uh, and all that stuff. And then, there are people who are so rich that they not only get everything, they will get two or three of everything. There are reviewers here on YouTube that when they get something, they will get two or three ver copies of a figure each time, so they can open one and play with it, and they will keep another one in the box for display, and they will keep the third one in the box so they can sell later. Yeah, I wish I was that rich. I mean, if I was that rich, then the thought process that have to go into making decisions would be a lot easier. But, ah, well, anyway, uh, this is my long-winded way of saying that everyone has a different situation, everyone's thought process is a little bit different. So. Uh, don't try. Don't don't think that uh, what I'm showing you today that applies to me is how it is for every other collector. I'm not saying I'm not here to speak for anyone else. I'm just here to speak for me, give you a glimpse into the mind and collecting habit of a totally blind, partially deaf martial artist who collects a action figure. Our video today uh, will be split into four sections, mainly figures that I didn't want in the first place, but ended up really, really loving it after I got it in my hand. These were, uh, granted, very rare occurrence, but always great surprise, very pleasant surprise and very welcoming uh, when it happened. The second category is figures that I didn't want in the first place, but I sort of had to get it because I need to complete a group or a team. The third category is figures that um, I didn't want in the first place, but I ended up getting because the deal was just too good to pass up. It was really cheap. And last but not least, the fourth category is figures that I didn't want to get in the first place. But I got Shanghai into getting it because of a certain reason that compelled me into getting it. Yeah, uh, sounds a lot more complicated than you thought collecting can be. Mm -hmm. Now, let's begin. We'll first start with a figure that I didn't want in the first place, but ended up really glad that I got it. Meet Leatherback. This is one of the kaijus from the first Pacific Rim movie. Uh, a pretty interesting movie. I mean, if you like giant monsters and giant robots, a giant robot beating up giant monsters, and giant monsters de destroying giant robots. Yeah, yeah, like it's a pretty good popcorn movie that doesn't require a lot of thought process to watch, uh, but it has some surprisingly emotional moments. And let me quickly mention this is a novelization. The novel based on the movie is just fantastic. Then if you have not read the novel, 
then I recommend you look, looking it up because it's really, really good. So anyway, Leatherback. When I watched the Pacific Rim movie, I was intrigued,、uh, but I wasn't really interested in getting any of the action figure from the movie. So why is that? Why 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 didn't I want to get any action figures from this movie? Well, because these monsters, these kaiju's, and the Jaegers, the robots, they're supposedly hundreds of feet tall in real scale. While the action figures, even a large figure like Leatherback here, is At best, maybe eight inches or、uh, seven inches, depending on how you measure him.、Uh, this creates a problem displaying figures like these. You can't mix them in with hardly anything else because most of my collections are the uh, uh, six inches, seven inches action figures, which means Captain America or Batman is going to be six inches. Now, this monster, this leather bag, is supposed to be like I don't know, two hundred fifty feet tall or something like that. So, in proper scale, Batman should only be the size of his finger or fingernail. Actually, Batman should only be the size of his fingernail. But when you display him with Batman, that now he's almost the same size as Batman. This, this is very difficult. Like、uh, on a From a display perspective, so you would end up needing to display these guys on a completely separate shelf on their own, so they don't look weird standing mixed in with other、uh, action figures.、Uh, so this is why I didn't want anything from this、uh, movie line because they are so hard to display. However. However,、um, that Christmas, and we're talking about Christmas, I believe, twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen. My film director, my two film directors, Ian and Darren, thanks guys,、uh, got together, and they showed up at my door with a box. That contained Leatherback and one of the robots is the、uh, uh, Gypsy Danger in it, and the timing was so uncanny because when they did that, when they showed up with this gift, I just finished reading the Pacific Rim novel. Now there was no way for them to know that I was do I was reading the novel because I I didn't talk to anybody about it. But it was just one of those super coincidental things that、uh, really almost like fate had something to do with it. Now, while I didn't want to get any figures from this line, after I have it in my hand, I was totally impressed. I mean, this thing is. Uh, it's made made by NECA, by the way.、Uh, it's bulky, so well detailed. All the cracks and and、uh, scales in its on its skin, all the little weird bio、uh, logical details, and those weird,、uh, almost like a cross between a reptile and a gorilla. And it's hefty. This is one hefty toy. It's it's a、uh, very solid.、Uh, It's so unique and so cool that I love the heck out of it. I, I don't really care much for the robot. I don't care much for most of the、uh, robot designs in Pacific Rim, but、uh, the kaiju, the monster, yeah, the designs really, really cool. So this turned out to be one of those figures that I really didn't want、uh, in the first place, but once I got it, I really, really enjoyed it. Next up, 
we're going to the next category, figure that I didn't want in the first place, but I got anyway because I needed to complete a team or a group. Introducing Invisible Woman. We've seen this figure before, so I'm not going to elaborate too much about her. She's relatively new. Uh, just came out, I believe, earlier last year, made by Hasbro in the Retro Fantastic Four line. Now, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with this action figure. Uh, let me say that. But the fact remains, when the superhero, or heroine in this case, when the superhero's power is turning herself invisible, uh, that really doesn't do a lot for a blind guy like me, right? Uh, and it doesn't lend itself to interesting looking action figure. In fact, this action figure, from a tactile point of view, is so boring that if you take her, take off the special power uh, energy shield thingy that she's holding, if you take that away, and then you throw her in a box with all the other Hasbro Marvel's uh, female figures, I wouldn't be able to identify her. There are some females, uh, like Tigra uh, and uh, Elektra and uh, some of those uh, that I can identify immediately by touch. But the Invisible Woman will be one of those that I'm going to hold her in my hand and like, I don't remember who this is supposed to be, just feel like a generic regular female to me. Again, there's nothing wrong with the figure itself, it's just there's only so much the company can do when the character's power is to turn herself invisible. I mean, how do you portray that in a toy form? Uh, so it's not nothing against the company or the figure itself, but it, it's I hate to say this because I know Invisible Woman is very popular with some people, but for me, for a blind guy, she is a very boring character, right? And just overall, uh, not that much fun, not not really uh, that inspiring, not inspiring enough for me to say, hey, I really would like an action figure of Invisible Woman. But unfortunately, she is such an important part of the Fantastic Four. Okay, you can't have a Fantastic Four display without her. Otherwise, it's going to turn into the Fantastic Three. It's like trying to build a Ninja Turtle display and you, you should only like Raphael. Well, you can't do a Ninja Turtle display with just Raphael. You need all four turtles. You can probably get away with don't have Splinter. You can probably do away with mm, April O'Neil, but you at least need the four turtles. And this is the same with Fantastic Four. Even though you don't care for a couple of the characters, you need them on your shelf. After uh, Otherwise, your display is going to look really, really wonky, and it's going to be incomplete. Uh, and this is something that actually, unfortunately, happens a lot, and it's, I'm going to just take a minute talking about this. Because when you're collecting something, sometimes money is tight, okay? Uh, especially for someone like me, money is always tight. I have two cats i got to take care of, and um, don't even get me started on how much financial damage I suffered during COVID. Um, so this is one reason why I'm selling off my Star Wars collection, is because of finance. But when you have already, finance is tight, but you need to end up getting figures that you don't really like, you don't really care for, you don't really want, because you need to complete that team. This becomes problematic, and it's a little bit unfortunate that uh, it's a problem. But yeah, it's a problem that we bring onto ourselves because there are 
there are collectors that will say, I, I just don't like Invisible Woman. I'm fine with only have three of the characters I like. I don't need to complete the whole team. Yeah, I mean, you, you, if you are liberal enough uh, in your mind and you can do that, if you are not OCD like me, then all the more power to you. This is also another minor reason why I'm stopping collecting Star Wars. Because Star Wars has so many boring supporting characters, but your team going to look incomplete without them. Like, if you want to build the original cast, you need Princess Leia. But Princess Leia is really not that exciting, unless you get her, the version of her in a slave outfit. But that's a different story for a different day. If you want the original setup, you need guys like C-3PO. Well, C-3PO is really not that interesting either. He's a skinny robot that even in the show, he barely ever do anything other than being funny. Uh, so, this is not to say that I dislike those characters when they are in the movie, but their design don't do anything for me personally. Uh, so, buying them would only be uh, spending a lot of money just to complete the display. And Star Wars, unfortunately, have a lot of those teams. There's a lot of those, like, if you want, if you want the Darth Vader, okay, you need Darth Vader, now you still need a bunch of Stormtroopers, otherwise Darth Vader would be standing there on his own. Uh, you need a Luke Skywalker for Darth Vader to fight. Uh, what if you don't like Luke Skywalker, right? Um, now that you have a Luke Skywalker, you might need a Yoda, you might need uh, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, but what if you don't like those characters? So you end up being, uh, feel like you're kind of obligated to get a lot of these guys just because they make the display complete. An Invisible Woman is a good example of that. Moving on, now we look at a figure that I didn't want in the first place, but I ended up getting because, well, it was really cheap. Here is Ezio, Master Assassin from Assassin's Creed, made by NECA. Again, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with this action figure. It's actually quite a nice action figure, but I totally didn't want him because I already have a Ezio action figure, I believe that one made by McFarlane, and it comes with more accessory, and it looks almost just as good, and I, unless for some, in some special circumstances, I don't like to go out of my way to get uh, different versions of one character, like, you know, one Batman is good enough for me, like, I, I don't need a Batman in firefighter outfit. I don't need a Batman in karate outfit. I don't need a Batman in ninja outfit. I just I just want like that one Batman. Uh, the only time when when I will actively out, go out of my way to look for uh, a specific different outfit for a character is if that outfit it looks really really cool or uh, if that outfit can. Uh, fill in as a different character. For example, uh, Iron Man is one of those characters that I don't mind having multiple versions of because Iron Man actually have different suits of armor that he can remotely control uh, to go into battle with him. So uh, it doesn't look weird when you have three or four Iron Man in diff like different Iron Man armor uh, display together. But otherwise, my usual way of collecting is just one of each character. I don't need alternative version. So while this Ezio is a different version from the one I had, it looks so similar that I didn't want him. However, uh, the eBay seller that I was buying from at the time uh, had combined shipping. And 
It was literally one of those situations where the more figure you buy, the more the better the deal is on shipping. And I saw this Ezio on the listing, and he was being sold、uh, for six ninety nine, seven bucks for this figure. Okay, so yeah, even though I didn't want him, I figured well, seven bucks for a high quality action figure. From a famous video game made by Neca, it's just too good of a deal to pass up. And plus,、uh, the way he is dressed, the way he has that hood over his head, if I put him really far back in my display, he can sort of stand in as a generic assassin guy. He doesn't have to be Ezio. So,、uh, in the end,、uh, that. Was the reason I got him. I didn't want him, but he was so cheap、uh, that I felt that、uh, it I, it was a, a no-brainer. Those of you that go to the grocery store sometimes and have buy things because it's on sale and it's super cheap, even though it's something that you don't really like to eat, but you bought it, you understand、uh, my logic here. Now we come to the last category, the figures, the figures that I didn't want, but got Shanghaied into buying because of some other reason. Usually, this reason comes in the form of a build a figure. What is build a figure? For those of you who are not collectors, build a figure is this、uh, thing that toy companies do nowadays. McFarlane does it, and、uh, Hasbro does it. Uh, uh, Mattel does it sometimes. Essentially, in every wave of action figure, let's say every time every wave come out, there's going to be usually let's say six figures. Out of these six figures,、uh, unless it's a very 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 good wave. Out of these six figures, there's usually a couple of figures that no one wants. Like you are going to have a wave that have, uh, like you you're going to have like let's say、uh, Ninja Turtle, okay? You are going to end up with a wave with Donatello, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael, and then some random Mouser or Sewer Rat or Some random like generic thing that no one care for in the first place. Maybe like、uh, an alternative version of Michelangelo, us、uh, in the us、uh, with surfboard or、uh, Leonardo in hockey uniform or something like that. Okay, let's、uh, just 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 using that for example. Every wave is going to have a couple of figures that really like no one care for. So toy companies like McFarlane and Hasbro come up with this thing. So they they throw in a bonus action figure. They take this bonus action figure and split it up into different body parts. So if you buy Michelangelo, you'll get the arm, left arm of Super Shredder. If you buy Leonardo, you get the right leg of Super Shredder. And、uh, if you buy those. Generic figures that no no one care for, then you get the head and torso of Super Shredder. In another word, if you really really want a Super Shredder, you have to buy every figure in the line. Otherwise, you can't get a Super Shredder. You can't buy it anywhere unless you go on eBay and get a secondary, which is going to cost an arm and a leg and a kidney. So this is. Build a figure. This is a new thing.、Uh, well, relatively new. The、uh, company's been doing it for the last twenty years.、Uh, this is their way of making people buy all the figures in a way. And I hate to admit this, it gets me many, many times. And every time this happens, I feel like the biggest sucker in the world. Look, I have a lot of Batman. I have Batman in winter outfit. I have Batman 
uh, in 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 uh, all kind of different outfits. So the idea of a Batman that is all torn up, wielding a pair of battle axes, was not appealing to me. I, I can't imagine anyone woke up in the morning and said, "I really would like to have a Batman." That is wielding a pair of battle axes and it's all torn up like he just got put through a meat grinder, right? Like this, this, and this is not even that good of a Batman action figure. Sorry, McFarlane, McFarlane made this. Usually, you know, you guys know I'm a big fan of McFarlane, but this Batman, in addition to being just a really, uh. Weird design. Although this is how he looked on one of the comic book pages, okay. So it's not like McFarlane did this for no reason. But he is too big. Okay, this is the Batman that is bulkier than Superman. This is one seriously buff Batman. Like almost like ba Batman decided to、uh, go get some serious steroid treatment. Okay, so size wise, it's wonky. And design-wise, it's wonky. I don't imagine anyone really wanted this, but a lot of us ended up getting him. Why? Because of this guy. This guy's name is the Merciless, and、uh, he is going to deserve an entire episode on devoted to him because he is a very cool figure. Who is the Merciless? The Merciless is the alternate reality when Batman、uh, defeated the God of War, Ares, and then Batman ended up taking the、uh, power of Ares and became the God of War, and he called himself Batman the Merciless, and he turned into this gigantic God of War-inspired armored killing machine, which is what we're looking at here. Okay, this. Is why I got Shanghai into getting that super ridiculous looking torn up Batman because you need to get that Batman to get the body part for to complete the Merciless. And like I said, unfortunately, that seems to be the case in a lot of、uh, situations where we are Shanghai into、uh, getting completely ridiculous, stupid. A、uh, waste of space action figure because the end the bonus figure is just too good. I mean, do do I regret getting that Batman? No.、Uh, even though I still don't like him, but because of being able to complete such a cool figure like the Merciless here, that it made him almost worth it. Almost. <laughs> That wraps us up、uh, for today's episode. Looking at action figures that I didn't want in the first place, but got anyway. Next episode, we'll be looking at some of the action figures that I wanted to get,、uh, and the result may be a bit more unpredictable. <laughs> sometimes they were good, sometimes they were bad. I'm going to talk more about what goes into the、uh, motivation. Uh, in getting some of those figures, why did I want them,、uh, and stuff like that. So stay tuned, and we'll be back tomorrow for some fitness Friday. Don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter using at Johnny Tiger 1981.